Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo. I'm the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Dr. Mark Ellison. Uh, Dr. Ellison is an associate professor of ancient scripture at BYU. He specializes in early Christian texts, artifacts, iconography, and practices. He recently returned from archaeological field work at Hukuk uh, Excavations near mm -hmm. the Sea of Galilee. And he's a co-editor of the book Ancient Christians, an introduction for Latter-day Saints, which was recently published by the Maxwell Institute. Today we're looking at Alma 17 to 22 and um, this beautiful painting by Stephanie Cade Northrup called Abish Running. Um, so Mark, can you tell us what what's happening here? What uh, What's the story that's going on here with Abish? Sure. Uh, so at this point uh, in the story, the, the moment that Stephanie has captured here is in Alma chapter 19. Uh, and it's about verse 17. Uh, it, it's at the house of King Lamoni. And King Lamoni and the queen and all the servants have fallen to the ground, overcome by the power of the, the Spirit of the Lord. And uh, Abish on the other hand, hasn't. She's already been converted to the Lord. She recognizes what has happened, and she reasons, if, if I can tell other people and get other people to come here, then they'll be convinced of the power of the Spirit of the Lord. So then mm -hmm. it says she goes running, and uh, the text in the Book of Mormon says, um, uh, let's see, she is supposing that this opportunity by making it known unto the people what had happened among them and that by beholding this scene it would cause them to believe in the power of God. Therefore she ran forth from house to house making it known unto the people. And so that's the moment that Stephanie has chosen to depict here is Abish running. Yeah. Now I noticed um, in the Book of Mormon art catalog we have about 30 images of Abish but this is the only one that shows her in full action like this. Mm -hmm. what, what does that do for the visualization? How is that different and why does it matter? Oh yeah, I, I, I think it's so interesting that, uh, that Stephanie has chosen to just depict Abish and mm -hmm. to show her in this moment of action. Mm -hmm. Like she's used horizontal brush strokes here mm -hmm. to kind of depict the background blurring by, yeah, you know, as, yeah. as the runner goes forward. And I love how uh, there's the depiction of strength and direction and purpose mm -hmm. and those are things we see in the whole greater story of Abish. Um, also we see that she's clothed rather simply, she's barefoot, mm -hmm. um, that, which maybe suggests that she's of uh, slave status, uh, she's, mm -hmm. she's a servant, um, and yet she has direction. She knows she wants to run and, uh -huh. and the, the way she's poised there uh, and the speed and swiftness that are depicted are um, are part of her overall character as someone who acts decisively in a moment that changes the whole story for her people. Yeah. Um, so Mark, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that you saw this moment of Abish running connecting her with other famous running figures from the Bible. Can mm -hmm. you tell me more about that? Yeah, it just makes me think of um, people who are de depicted in biblical narratives who run at, at key moments. Uh, Abraham runs to offer hospitality to his guests, mm -hmm. Rebecca and Rachel also, uh, and um, the, the father of the prodigal son runs mm -hmm. to embrace mm -hmm. his son in ways that are similar to how Esau ran to embrace Jacob and they're reconciled. So beautiful moments of reconciliation. And then there are messengers who run to deliver messages. Mm -hmm. And I think the one that comes first to my mind is Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. um, in John chapter 20, she goes to the tomb um, and finds it empty and she runs to go tell Peter and John. Mm -hmm. And then they run back. Obviously Mary runs with them because the story says she's there with them at the tomb. Um, so there's all these running yeah. uh, episodes, running to deliver a message, running to understand an event that's uh -huh. of great importance that they don't understand quite yet. And something similar is happening here, running to deliver a message about what's happening at the king's house, to bring people together to see the power of the Lord. Yeah. I brought just a couple of images of some of these other famous running figures. Um, here's um, Peter and John running to the tomb after they've heard the news to see if it's really true. Mm -hmm. um, this is a famous one by a, a French 19th century um, non-LDS artist. But then we have a couple of um, depictions of the same figures mm -hmm. um, by, this is Liz Lemon Swindle and Dan Burr. 
um, again, capturing that like feeling of like haste and, and movement and excitement. Um, and then you were mentioning the women at the tomb. And this is Rose de Tocdal showing these women running to tell the news after they've come in the morning um, to the tomb. Uh, one thing I love about this is that the Gospels do preserve a memory that women were the first to see the empty tomb and deliver the message of Christ's resurrection. And, um, and, and so when going back to Abish and Abish running, uh, she is in this tradition of yeah. important women messengers in the scriptural mm -hmm. uh, inheritance and you know that their, their message uh, that they deliver. Um, there's a psalm, Psalm 147 verse mm -hmm. 15 has a line that says, God's word runs swiftly. Oh. And I love that yeah. idea that you know whether it's these women from the tomb or Abish, they're delivering God's word. They're bringing other people to recognition of God's acts. Mm. And that is something that runs swiftly. Oh, that's beautiful. I really love in the scriptures with Abish where it talks about how she saw this as an opportunity to convert people. Mm. And um, it talks about how she had been converted and then she wants to convert other people. And then um, towards the end of the story when the people are um, have all had this, this miraculous experience, um, it says uh, their hearts were changed. Um, how do, can you talk more about this idea of conversion and, and the role Abish plays there? Yeah, uh, conversion, mm -hmm. a, a change in our hearts, a change in our whole makeup that mm -hmm. happens as the Spirit of the Lord comes into our lives. Uh, and this is something that had happened to Abish before this event, which right. puts her in a position to make such a difference here. Um, the scripture text says that she had been converted to the Lord for many years on account of, and this is an interesting phrase too, it's kind of ambiguous, uh, uh, on account of a remarkable vision of her father. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times we read that as uh, her father had a vision mm -hmm. and for some reason uh, it, that caused Abish to grow up already having been converted. That's a possibility, but it could also be read as Abish had a vision. And was it of her earthly father who had passed away or something like that? Or is this a poetic way of talking about she had seen the Lord? Mm -hmm. um, because the Lord is often referred to as a father in the Book of Mormon text, especially in this part of the Book of Mormon text. So mm -hmm. I like staying open to both possibilities sure. since it, the scripture text itself is <laughs> ambiguous. And I, I like being open to the possibility that she has her own experience with the Lord. Um, and that seems supported by the very next verse, verse 17, having been, thus having been converted to the Lord and never having made it known, therefore when she saw, and, and therefore uh, she goes running. Oh. Uh, but she had already had oh, her own conversion experience. It had something to do with a visionary experience. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so she was converted and then she seizes on this opportunity to help other people see yeah. so that they can be converted too. So um, these people that are having this experience, they're Lamanites? Is yes. That right? King, King Lamoni and the Queen and Abish, they're all Lamanites? Right, and this happens towards the beginning of the mission of the Sons of Mosiah, mm. Ammoner and Omner, him and I, to, yeah. the, uh, to the Lamanites, uh, which is a 14-year mission. Um, and, and it might not be coincidence that one of the most interesting chapters of Scripture as far as women characters in Scripture, mm. Alma 19, happens among the Lamanites, okay. because it seems like uh, uh, the Lamanites honored and respected women better than the Nephites did. Hmm. Remember back in Jacob chapter two, Jacob calls out the Nephites for how right. they were mistreating yeah. women and children. Yeah. And he points to the Lamanites and, say, and says, uh, they love their wives and children and right. they're doing better. And then we get to the anti-Nephi Lehi's and we get to uh, the, um, the army of Helaman, mm -hmm. they have great faith. Why? Because their mothers had great faith. Right. And so an important role of mothers. Uh, and uh, Samuel the Lamanite, when he's preaching, he's very concerned about how the coming events are going to impact women. Oh, and so okay. there's just yeah. this common thread that uh, people who've been doing research on the Book of Mormon the past 15, 20 mm -hmm. years have, have been doing just fascinating new uh, studies in literary and theological ways. Mm -hmm. And they've been finding this. and. Uh, and so it's kind of interesting that because, here at yeah. the heart of the Book of Mormon, we have this one story of a queen and her servant girl mm -hmm. whose action and decisiveness um, changed the whole course of history for their people. Wow, that's fantastic. 
do you have like a personal reaction to the artwork? Mm -hmm. uh, I do. I love it because I'm a runner, <laughs> oh, and okay. so yeah. I love running. Uh, and uh, I love the kinetic kind of feeling of the uh -huh. artwork. Um, running doesn't always feel comfortable, but when it does, and when when you're just flying along, it's like C.S. Lewis once said, uh, you would if you could always run feeling that way, you would never choose to do anything else. It just <laughs> it feels so wonderful. Um, I notice that sometimes in scripture, running is a metaphor for discipleship. Like in, in Hebrews chapter 12, um, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and let us run with patience, with mm -hmm. endurance, the race that is set before us. Or Paul at the end of his life as represented in 2 Timothy, I fought a good fight, I finished the race. Okay. Uh, I have kept the faith. And, and so uh, as a disciple of Christ um, who is trying to live faithful and as a runner too, uh -huh. someone who just uh, enjoys that, uh, yeah, this image really <laughs> resonates with me and I can, I can yeah. relate to it on multiple levels. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that and thanks for joining us today. Thanks.